Hello my lovely viewers. On October 27th and 28th, I took part to Wegfest UK London Olympia 2018. I love that festival so I, I'm there almost every single year. One of the most inspiring stories in the first day was the story of D. Anthony Evans. So please watch the three parts of my videos to get his story where he is turning pain into power through fitness, positive energy and the adoption of a plant-based lifestyle, truly inspiring positive mindset. D'Antoni, we love you, so please keep on watching the videos, bye bye! Feels like death. Over the last 29 months I've had over 325 tumors removed from my body, from my head to my toe, including cancer between the scalp and the skull and a two-pound tumor that was living on his spine. Ironic that Evans takes such good care of the body that attacks him. The cancer in me is not gone. We've just made an agreement. I'm not going to put anything on my body to irritate it, and it's going to allow me to look like this and thrive and live my life. Dr. James Consgard has treated Evans since he was a child at the University of Chicago. I think he's tackled the problem in a different way through his diet and exercise and come up with a positive solution. Evans doesn't know when the next tumor will come, but he doesn't worry about it. The 38-year-old is on a strict plant-based diet and is in the gym three to six hours a day preparing to come back strong. D. Anthony's motivation goes beyond the gym. He's also an ambassador for the American Cancer Society, committed to raising money and hosting events to raise awareness. We either sing on DC, on the Capitol, and we do lobby day. If you hear him speak to a group, he's very inspiring. That's what it's about. You had to bet on him beating it or not, who would you guess? On oh, WP. And D. Anthony has his own message to those fighting cancer, including very young patients. What do you say to those kids? Keep your hands up, your head tucked. And don't you dare stop swinging until it's over. Derek Young, CBS 2 News. Look at you! And he got some good news. Evans had a doctor's appointment today and was told, see you in one year. All righty. That is my little story. Because I know today, right here at Olympia, in 
London, England. Many, if not all of us, can relate to losing someone or losing something. Or maybe have to cause pain or agony because of someone or something. And this is normal. But you know what's happening while we get all discombobbled? Life is still moving. One of my favorite writers, her name is Regina Brett. She authored a book called God Never Blinks. And there's an amazing quote in there that sums my life up or how I live my life. And it's this, waking up every morning with this intention. No matter how we feel, we have to get up, dress up, and show up for life. Let's fast forward four or five years. Me and basketball have pretty much gone our separate ways. Um, I'm not going to lie to you and say that losing basketball didn't break my heart because it was... It was one of the reasons I was waking up in the morning. It was the way I was gonna get me and my mother out of poverty. So when that kind of transpired, it, it, it shook me up. And then I lost my mother. And losing the two things that you wake up in the morning for, for a child, has you behaving in ways that you wouldn't behave if your mother was still here. Because I didn't, Grieve properly, I would get submerged in drugs and alcohol on certain target dates. My mother died September 13th, the second week of my junior year. So when this date would come around, I'd get drunk, get a pile of cocaine, and I'm only like 17, 18. And where I'm from, I had pride and ego, and everybody there like looked up to me, so I couldn't really go cry on anybody's shoulder, and I didn't want to feel like I wasn't a man. So I internalized my grief. And then through that internalization, my psychiatrist became drugs and alcohol. And I would do it on September 13th, and just to get through the three days and to the pain subsided, and I'd be okay. And then about 45, 50 days later, we would be at December 21st, which is my birthday. And it's also my mother's birthday. So imagine living with somebody for 16 years. She dies, and then that date comes up. How do you celebrate your born day when the woman that brought you into the world shares that day and she's not here anymore? And it would just traumatize me. And I get submerged in drugs and alcohol again, three, four days, hungover, and I'd be fine. Until we got to Mother's Day. And it was spaced out just enough where I couldn't get in front of my problem. I blew five, six years like that. On my seventh year, I woke up in Alexian Brothers Behavioral Health Center because I had apparently tried to take all of the drugs in my medicine cabinet. I had tried to commit suicide. I don't remember it, but I remember waking up in that hospital on a gurney strapped to it, screaming expletives at, at the doctor. And this is when my life changed though. And this is kind of was my introduction to weight training and just living a different way. But I gotta tell you, the doctor that was assigned me, you know, in rehabilitation clinics, they see, you know, people on drugs and alcohol, and say it's a revolving door. It was something about me though, because he made it very clear. I don't know how it works over here, but in America, the doctor only needs two prerequisites to take your power of attorney or take your rights. And that's that you were combative, trying to harm other people, which I came in, they said that I was swinging and I don't remember any of it, and that I tried to hurt myself. And then your doctor can get an emergency order from a judge and they'll take your, your power of attorney. What I'm getting at is, he told me I had a participating group, and in group, we would get to the root of what was while I was trying to kill myself. It took three weeks to break me. On that third week, 
I raised my hand for help, and that's when I went to group and learned how to grieve and learn how to get to the root of what was, was really causing me to want an idea. And I got out of there successfully, started my business. Um, I markered airtime for small businesses on cable television and through concerts. That's kind of was my niche. And I'm just going through life pretending like I don't have this disease called neurofibromatosis. Things are getting larger. I have them over 84% of my body. They're everywhere internally and externally, and I'm pretending like they didn't exist. Like a dumb man. Until January 2012, about seven years ago. It was New Year's Eve. I was experiencing extreme back pain. I'm talking about the type of pain where it felt literally like a cat was trying to claw themselves out of my back. Now I've been feeling pain for about four or five years and at that time I was a power lifter, 10,000 calories a day, 40 pounds of chicken breast a month, weighing casein three, four, five times a day. I was 315 pounds, I think that's 150 kilos here. It was a monster trying to be the biggest, strongest, toughest guy that ever walked the earth. To push 450 pounds 15 times and pull 1,100 off the ground. And I looked healthy. I looked incredible. But internally, I was dying. 